I remember I used to pray, Tasha. No, I used to stop. pray for a change in my life. When stop. things would go wrong, I used to beg and I was like, God I'm so sorry you. for whatever I've done wrong. Yeah. When I when I prayed like, oh, I hope my exams go well. Mm. And I studied and studied and studied and I still mm. failed. Mm. That again put in my head, why am mm. I praying? I looked at science and I was like, damn, okay. I can, I can see this, I can understand this, this makes sense. I prayed at a church, I've prayed in a mosque, I've read the Bible, I've read the Quran, I've done both. Mm. When I was younger, I tried so hard, Tasha. I tried really? so hard, I wanted to be the best Muslim there was. I wore the hijab, I went Stop. and prayed, I went to learn Arabic, I've tried my best. Stop. I say Allah, you say God. Yeah. I say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and you say Jesus Christ. Saying, why do you pray to a God you can't even see? <laughs> but it's like, yeah. why do you have so little faith? Hi guys, it's Tasha C and welcome back again to my new series of Talks with Tasha. So guys, as you know, I had to come back and do it bigger and better than last time. So today I've got a lovely episode with an amazing guest. But before we get into that, make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Hit that post notifications so you're notified. And if you're listening on Spotify, make sure you tune in, share Apple Podcasts. It's going to be everywhere, okay? So without further ado ado guys let me introduce my guest for today who is Sophia hi hey I'm Sophia yeah. my um religion is nothing I'm an atheist I'm oh! agnostic I have no religion um I'm a very open person I like learning about like religions and stuff and yeah I'm ready to answer everything you have to give me oh she's ready I'm ready <laughs> starting off them. Yeah. Have you read the Bible? Have you gone to church? Have you gone to the so, mosque? My parents, my mum is actually Christian and my dad is Muslim. Oh, that is <laughs> right. mad. Like, so, growing up, <laughs> wow. Two, it's, it's, it, was, it was an interesting life I had. As, when I was younger, I went to church. I, I, did, um, I did mosques. I prayed at a church. I've wow. prayed in a mosque. I've read the Bible. I've read the Quran. I've done both. I, uh, I've been to um, a temple before. I've done it all. I really wow. did explore before I said what I am, you know? Mm. I really wanted to give it a chance mm. before saying, yeah, I'm atheist, you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And like growing up in a household with a Muslim dad yeah. and a Christian <laughs> mom, nah. Yeah, Girl, was, <laughs> how was that? Like, was it, did it, even your mental health, push aside religion, let's look at you mentally. Like, how was that growing up? Do you know what? My mum, when it came to Christianity, obviously she grew up with it. She had spent her whole life as a Christian. Yeah. But she never practiced the religion like that. She didn't, okay. you know, try and pull it onto me. My mm. dad, mm. hey, my dad is a traditional Muslim. And no before, way. Yeah, before I was even born, he had told my mum, I want my kids to be Muslim. <laughs> he had already got that in his head, you this know? This is why you don't marry someone from another <laughs> religion. No, Do you know real. what? Do you know what? That has always been something I struggled with when I was younger because I used to get bullied for having two different it's religions like, in my household. It's so confusing for, the, for you. And it's like <laughs> mentally draining. Like your dad is saying she's going to be a Muslim. Yeah. Your mum is like... Oh, I'm a Christian though, so where do we go yeah, from there? My like, mum said, let them be what they want to be. So, like for uh -huh. example, my little sister's a Muslim. You know, she oh, she does really? the religion. Yeah, she does the religion. She does the whole shebang. For Eid, she fasted. She did everything. Oh wow! But me, I chilled. Um, I didn't. No do nothing. way. No. Nope. So you're growing up in a household where it's like even your sister is following this Muslim belief, and does it not like tempt you or pull you closer when you see her doing all of these things? I have, I have no attachment to the religion. That's I have nothing to the religion. After all these years of growing up. Yeah, you'd think, you you'd, think, you'd think, you'd think that I would be... That like, you would be a bit more yeah. attached. But yeah. the fact that you're telling me that you have no, that's weird. Why do you think that is though? Cause it's not like normal. It's, it's how you're, you're raised, you know? When mm. you're raised with a dad who doesn't really put the effort in for the religion, when he mm. doesn't show you what the religion has to give, mm. you realize like, oh, well then, it's not that important, is it? Mm. When I was younger, I tried so hard, Tasha. I tried really? so hard. I wanted to be the best Muslim there was. I wore the hijab, Stop. I went and prayed. I went to learn Arabic. I've tried my best. Stop. But my dad never put in that effort to yeah. really teach me. Yeah. He didn't tell me how to read the Quran. I had to learn that in Arabic school. I didn't no. have an attachment to anything. Yeah. And then when I hit high school, 
and I saw all these people around me and everyone is something. There's all these people with, I'm Hindu, I'm Sikh, I'm this, I'm that. And I was like, I don't know what I am. I have no clue what I'm doing. Mm. I was like, why am I stressing myself out over a religion? Mm. Like as a Christian myself, I would say that if you had like, if your mom was a stronger believer in yeah. Christ and she's, you know, you went to church and you found a church you actually liked and you were, you know, not like even participating in church, but just having friends there, Bible study, mm. worshiping, because the church is a beautiful place. Like I when know, you go I there, loved it. I, I love I love the vibe. Just the go church, in there. Oh, the church is a beautiful place. And when you find your church, that's even better. Yeah. Like you, there's no home like the church. Even some people say that, their home is not even as comfortable to them yeah, as the church ch is. Of course, a holy like, place will always. It's the same with a mosque. Mm. Like I felt, I felt very comfortable when I was in like a mosque. When mm. I was praying in a mosque, when I was there, because I spent quite a long time in yeah. there. I was very comfortable. Yeah, I just didn't feel like I fit in, really? and I felt like I didn't, I didn't merge well with people. Really? Yeah. Now this leads me to my next question straight away already. So going to the church and the mosque, how mm. was that different? Because obviously so you're visiting two different places. With a church, with the church I went to, it was very much homey vibe, you mm. know, like you go in, you've got a priest smiling, you've got all these families and people and everyone mm. you feel connected to, mm. you know. When you go to a mosque, it's a bit different. Mm. It's a lot more quieter. It's a oh, lot really? more calm. The vibe is very... Relax, you know, mm. your 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 whole body kind of just relaxes. No way. And when you start to go, because you go into a mosque to pray mostly. You yeah. don't go in there for much. Like you have like Bible study and all of that in church. With a mosque, you've got obviously Arabic learning and you've got learning about the, um, the Quran. Yeah. But then when it comes to the big part of the mosque, which is the middle part where you pray, it's mm. more you go in there and you come out. You know, mm. you go in at the time that's set to go pray. Yeah. You you wash yourself, you do wudu, which is washing your hands, your feet, your body, cleansing yourself before going to pray. Mm. Then you pray and you leave again. It's nothing oh. like you, like with the church, you know, you sit there, you speak, you talk, you converse. Yeah. In a, in a mosque, I mean, you can, but yeah. it kind of feels like because of how quiet it is and how calm it is, at least in the mosque I went to, yeah. you don't really want to spend too long in there, you know, because oh. you feel like you're intruding. And mm -hmm. do you think that, like, if you were, you know, just taught properly, even, like, as a Christian with your mum, because you've been speaking a lot about, like, as a Muslim, but even as a Christian, you know... I think, I think how it would have been different. It would have been different. Yeah. How was, like, praying um, as a, on the Christian side of things as well? Praying as a... So, Again, I didn't really know much when it came to the Christianity either. Yeah. So I went with my auntie um, a few times and she taught me like what I needed to read on the Bible, what I had to read when we st what we had to say when we were standing up, what we sung, uh, when we went up to the actual like place where the priest speaks and yeah. stuff. Um, she did teach me those things, but again, because I didn't know the deeper meaning behind it or mm. like the reasoning behind, why do you say these verses? What do these verses emotionally, physically, or spiritually yeah. have connection you, to you? You needed that counsel. Yeah. I needed, you needed that. I needed that support it. at that time. And it's so a shame that you didn't get it at no. that time. But I want you to know that it's never too late as of well. Of course not. Like, even now, I know your mind is so stern on there's no, there's no religion that, or how do we know? Because even like before the podcast, we were having a yeah, conversation. We were, we, we were, were speaking about it. We were this. talking. And this was telling me, like, how do you even know? Like, where you did know, the Bible come from? Like, who wrote the Bible? All of these questions. And it's like, all of these questions are answered in the Bible. And when you have that counsel, when you have that pastor, because I'm no pastor, I'm no, I'm not even mm -hmm. the best when it comes to answering those type of questions. Like, when you asked me in that, I was just like, what do you mean? I was like, what am I saying now? Because it was just a situation where I was like, I didn't know what to really say. But if you have, if you look to a higher power who would know what to say, you would have had your answers quick, quick. And it makes sense. Like when you seek, you will find, it says in the Bible, when you seek the Lord, you will find him. Mm. But how do you seek the Lord when- You have no guidance. You have no guidance, you have no source. And that's like a lot of my friends as well are Christians, but it's like, I don't know what church to go to. I don't mm. know who to even go to to find a good yeah. church. Like I've been trying to find a good church for ages. I feel awkward when I step into the church. Why is everybody staring at me? I don't like the vibe of this place. Is this not a place where God has told us to love everybody? Mm -hmm. So yet still, why are we, you know, there's this why judgmental do I feel this, eye. There's this judgmental atmosphere. It's not, just, it's not even just like the church. 
I know your friends, they're right. Because yeah. you walk in and you've yeah. got all these eyes like 100%. looking at you. And you're 100%. just like, I'm by myself. I don't mm -hmm. really know what I'm doing, but mm -hmm. I'm by myself. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why people are looking at me yeah. like this, but I feel like I'm not wanted. Exactly. It's like, I feel like I'm not valued. Yeah. And if you go somewhere and you feel like you're not valued or not wanted or you don't fit you don't in, come back. Just you don't come back. You don't come back. And it's like, how do you expect these people to be coming back to the church, the same place that you're inviting them, mm. when you keep on overlooking them, when you're dismissing them? And I feel like, as a Christian myself, I feel like that's something that, you know, we all need to do better on. Yeah. We all need to work on because we need to make each other feel loved. God mm. says, love your neighbor as yourself. As in, <laughs> love each other as, as you, you love, love yourself. Yeah. And if they just shown you that, or if, you know, we could have done that earlier, then it shows that like we could have loved each other yeah. just as much as we love ourselves. Exactly. We could all be in a place where we know, right, this is where I am. Mm -hmm. This is my purpose. Yes. This, this is my, my reasoning to be This here. is my reasoning to be here. And I have my morals as a Christian, yeah? And let's say you have your morals as a Muslim, let's I just do. say, yeah? yeah? How would we be together in the same household, live together, whilst I'm obeying the Bible and you're obeying another, you know what I mean? So, hmm. how my parents, did, it was just, it was actually quite calm, you know? My dad prayed when he needed to pray, and my mum, when she did read the Bible and when she did do her thing, she'd do her thing. There was no, like, ongoing conflict between the two. And there never should be any ongoing yeah. conflicts between the two, but for some reason, in people's minds, it's like, oh, but that seems so wrong, you know? Yeah, yeah, to yeah. hear, like, someone reading the Bible and then yeah. another person reading the Quran and yeah. praying on the floor, yeah. it's like, it's almost like it's shunned and mm. it shouldn't happen. It shouldn't, yeah. But it, it, in a household, it's very... It's like a normal house. Mm. You do what you need to do to feel good, mm. to feel like you're doing the right thing. Mm. And when you've got morals like my mother and morals like my father, mm. it didn't override each other. It actually mm. went together because at the end of the day, religions, they are just, they're not the same thing, but they are interlinked. Mm. We all believe in God. Mm. We all believe in something. Even if it's not the same person, mm. the same name. I say Allah, you say God. Yeah. I say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and you say Jesus Christ. Yeah. But at the end of the day, yeah. we both have a link. Yeah. You know when you said about like coming together, it's so wrong, but it's because like certain things in the Bible as well contradict that. Like it says, do not be unequally yoked with your partner in the Bible. Meaning you can't have this different beliefs from them. You no, can't be on different ways. I think it is in the Quran as well. Really? I think I can't, don't yeah, quote me on that. Do not quote me on that. Yeah. Don't quote me. <laughs> they won't. I'm, you're almost, no, you're I'm no. almost certain there is something about that. May not, may not be the same thing, but there is something about that somewhere, mm. which might be the reasoning behind a lot of the yeah. views behind like two different religions in yeah, the same household. Exactly, but. that's why, that's exactly why, because you, that's what I mean. It's a miracle that your parents have made it work. Because yeah. <laughs> it's real. It really <laughs> is. A lot of the time, it's like in the Bible, when you are unequally yoked with somebody, how do you, you know, overlook? How do you work around it? But you've just said that your parents have done that. Yeah. So there's obviously been a way that yeah. like, they've done it. What did you guys do like during like celebrations like Easter, Christmas? Okay. Yeah. So we don't celebrate Christmas religiously. We celebrate okay. it as a holiday. So, like, we do the presents, we have the nice oh, dinner. Yeah, you're not. But we don't, yeah. you know. What about your mum? Does would she not want to like embrace the fact that she again? She's a bit like me. We have trauma behind our childhoods when it came to um, religion. Like my mum, okay. although she was cr brought up Christian, she had no. She has a link with Christianity still, yeah. but it's not as strong as what it used to be when she was younger. Because when she was younger, it was every single day at the church. Sunday, you're oh doing everything. You know, now it's no longer like that. Because I guess as you grow older, for my mum at least, she realised like, as much as I prayed, as much as I I wished and I hoped and I believed, nothing changed for me. Mm. So why should I keep you know going? And mm. I think that was the same for me. Mm. When you're always praying and mm. hoping, like I used, I remember I used to pray, Tasha. No, I used to stop. pray for a change in my life. Stop. When things would go wrong, I used to beg and I was like, God I'm so sorry you. for whatever I've done wrong. Please God let it change. Yeah. And it wouldn't. And then I realized, why am I still doing this to myself? Yeah. Why am I holding on 
to something that I don't even know could be there. Even if yeah, it is there, yeah. they're not helping me. Yeah. You know, yeah. when I when I prayed like, oh, I hope my exams go well, mm. and I studied and studied and studied, and I still mm. failed. Mm. That again put in my head, why am mm. I praying? Mm. Why am I mm. doing this to myself? And that's uh, what your mum went through and what you just said you went through is it's such a deep issue in the Christian faith mm. because a lot of the times we pray and we feel like, why is my prayers not, not being heard. answered? Why is God not hearing me? Yeah. God. I failed this exam. I don't, I can't do this again. Like, I can't fail yeah. maths again. Like, and it's so what the painful. Hell? It's painful and it's draining because it's like, am I wasting my time? And I know yeah. exactly what you're saying because I've even been through situations like that where I've been thinking like, oh my days, like, why is God not answering my prayers? Like, mm -hmm. is he actually here? But all I can tell you is God's timing, not yeah. yours. <laughs> and I know, I know it's as simple as that. And there's probably so many quotes in the Bible to show you that. But it's literally just when you have to remember that he has a better plan for you. Even though right now we think passing maths will be everything. Or I thought, you know, I don't know. Finishing why, FMP. Why isn't my yeah. YouTube viral yet? Like, yeah. what the hell? Like, why am I not getting paid for this? God knows how much I love doing this. Yeah. Why am I, you know, spending so much hours and time and, mm -hmm. you know, traveling an hour and 20 minutes to college every day to do this and it's not doing well and other people are recording yeah. TikToks and spend one second into something and that goes viral. Why, God, why? And you always have these questions as a Christian because you always think, right, we have a God we pray to, he should be providing for us he should be you know coming to us but it's like that's not how god sees it mm. it's as simple as that god knows what we need more than what we think we need yeah and i know it's hard to hear but as much as you probably thought i needed to pass this i was studying so long i put in night work as much as i think i'm traveling to college every day doing all of this god is saying not right now, now Tasha. Yeah. It will come saying, when it's ready. It will come when it's ready mm. because God is always listening. Like I promise you, God is always listening. Like God has worked in my life in amazing ways that if he wasn't listening, there will be no way I'll be here right now. If he wasn't listening, you never know what could have happened out there. You think that car went fast on the road by accident? No. Yeah. You think, you know, when you're nearly about to get hit on the road, when, yeah, your, life, yeah. when, you, when your life could have literally gone, you think it was just the luck that that split second that car went? It wasn't luck, it was God. And that's why if you're waking up each day and your prayers are still not being answered, don't think that, nah, God is not listening because God is waking you up every day for a reason. Mm -hmm. God is waking you up every day because he has a plan for you. And God's plan will always be better than our plan. So since you're saying, yeah, there's a higher power, there's something there that you don't know, does that lead you to believing into things like the Big Bang, science, conspiracy theories? Is that what, <laughs> yeah, go into okay, that because so when... I, I was I was very much into the historical side of life. So when I learned about the Big Bang, when I learned in the scientific side, I felt like I could connect to that. Do you know why? Because why? there was reasoning behind it. There was evidence. There was certain things like, with the Big Bang, it's not really evidently, you can never say surely the Big Bang happened. Yeah. But like, for example, how our world was made mm. in the sense of not spiritually, not emotionally, just how it physically was made, mm. there is, pure evidence for that scientific mm. research that can tell you right the rocks eroded they came together one two three four it got bigger and bigger boom you've got the earth organisms we got humans we got animals behind that i can understand that there was understanding behind it i looked at science and i was like damn okay i can i can see this i can understand this this makes sense with religion when they told me like i can't remember some of the things like god took seven days to create the world and stuff yeah. like that I could not really, not believe it, but understand it. Because mm. to me, when especially when you grow up with science behind it, mm. you're like, how the hell did that work then? <laughs> how mm. did God make this? How mm. did he make all of this? Mm. You know, mm. you question it and you're like, how? How did this happen? But a lot of us Christians, right? We don't think of it like that at all. Like, I don't know how to explain it. We just don't see it as how. We see it more as we trust in God. It says that, that's exactly like saying, why do you pray to a God you can't even see? But it's like, <laughs> yeah. why do you have so little faith in yeah. the God that is there? I think it's more trust. Like you, when you have trust in God, you can 
take it in exactly. when you don't it's a lot harder exactly yeah. exactly i can and see it yeah. yeah do you get what i'm yeah, saying of course. it's that trust it's that you have to have faith we call it faith as a christian we walk by faith and not by sight that's our whole saying mm. for our whole religion okay we don't need science we don't need the big bang theory to tell me something that humans that god has created these humans and now these humans are now trying to make another way because how do you even know that yes there's science behind it how do we even know the science is right if you want to if we want to be all clueless i now, can do the same to you too no, though yeah, do you yeah, see yeah, what i mean, I see what you mean it's, but, it's so hard yeah it's so exactly hard. but when then, you've got it like that, it's like, yeah, yeah but you're the right. The thing yeah. is, is you're very right. Yeah. And I get where you're coming yeah. from. That's the, the, the bit about being atheist is I can see it on both sides. Yeah. I can see the scientific side. I can see the religious yeah. side. Now I just sit in the middle and I'm like, okay, <laughs> Never mind. I'm not going to go for either. Never mind. But, but the, the, difference, go for either. the difference between me and you right now is that I am saying I have faith in God. Do you get it? I have faith. I don't. And I don't. That's the, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. the difference. The thing is with religion, although it is so stable, it's also, just like how science is also stable, it's also very unstable, mm. you know? There's a thing behind everything, mm. but there's also nothing because like, of how life works. Mm. You know, you could be the most devout. I know I have a personal friend who is a mm. devout Christian, and she has said on multiple times, I've wanted to drop the religion altogether. It's deeper. Because it's so much, so many questions running through your head. It's a lot. And it's like, if I do this, will it be a sin? But lot. how is it really a sin? How do I know if I do this, I'm going to go to hell? How do I know if I do this, I'll go to yeah. heaven? How do I know what's written here will be the right thing to do? Do you see what I, I mean? I see exactly what you're saying. It's a lot of Ta questions. Yeah. It's a lot to take in. Yeah. And because of that, that leads a lot of different Christians and different beliefs of the believers to not know which way to go yeah. and not know how to position themselves. And that would lead you to be a bit one foot in, one foot yeah. out. But and then I one day you, about, you either put your foot yeah. right in and you go and you do yeah. it or you walk away. But that's what I talked about in my Christian episode now. You can't be one foot in the world and one foot out of yeah, the world. Yeah, of course. And I'm not going to even come and sit here and lie and say that I'm so perfect and I'm this perfect Christian because I'm you not. You make mistakes. I'm You're not. human. Exactly. Mistakes I'm human. are meant to be made. I, I make mistakes and I still struggle with my faith. Mm -hmm. Sometimes as a Christian, like I love this trend on TikTok. It's like I'm a Christian, but I still struggle with lust, you know, addiction, yeah. you know, um, lying. Mm -hmm all of these temptations in the world, because at the end of the day, we live in the world, and as a Christian myself, I live in the world, but I'm not of the world. Mm. I live in this world, and as long as we live in this world, there will always be, be distractions. Something. There, there will be something. It's, that's how God Even, made it, right? That's how God that's made how God it. Made that's it. how God made it. It's there our would, test. It's our test. My test is now a testimony. <laughs> <laughs> My test is now a testimony. Mm. Yeah. God has given us this test, but this test, this addiction that was meant to break me, I have now overcome it, and now I'm preaching to other people to mm -hmm. break the addiction. This Good thing the devil you. has yes. used to put me down, I'm now using that, and I'm putting the devil down. I'm mm -hmm. putting the sinners down to shame. Do you get it? Because yeah. God uses all of these things as tests, but once we overcome them, we reach a potential that we would never, ever see before do you get what i mean yeah. we reach a part of ourselves that is like wow like i actually did this yeah do you get yeah. it it's and mad you get that pride and you're you're so good because you so feel good. good inside and everything i know exactly i exactly. do i do know exactly I do. right i think that we've literally covered everything like and you know what's mad guys i did have so i had like 12 eight questions that we were planning I was going to look at. But when I tell you the way this conversation has flowed, it must be God <laughs> or something because <laughs> every... No, it's God because every single question just came to my head and I, it just... Everything has been and discussed. You know, take my word for it. She was looking at the, her phone to try and figure out all the questions before we started this episode. <laughs> Literally. So God must have been God, watching. God was here. God was here because I was like, oh, how am I going to know these questions? And I promise you, when we look back after this, we're going to look back and I literally, we went through it and it all came so naturally, like, about everything. And honestly, I know this is going to edify so many people. Anyways, thank you again thank for you coming so much on. For me. No worries. And guys, I want to say thank you guys so much for watching this podcast. Hope you like, comment, and subscribe. This was amazing. Probably one of my favorite episodes. And I don't say that a lot. So <laughs> you're lucky. Thank you. So yeah, love you guys. And hope you guys enjoyed. Bye.